it's too expensive. The three most dreaded words that every single salesperson will get throughout his career. Some get it more than others, some get it less than others, but we all will get this objection. It's too expensive. So before I show you how we actually handle such an objection, I'm assuming one thing. I'm assuming that this objection is the real objection. It's not a fake one. It's not something that your prospect is telling you just to make you go away. So it's the real one. And if, if you want to learn about how to find out whether this is the real objection or not, then there's another video called What to Do When Objections Strike. Go watch that video after this so you can uncover what is the real objection. And there are three ways you can actually handle this objection. The first way is to use Tai Chi. Most of you probably know what Tai Chi is. Tai Chi is this, you know, it, it, you know, somehow I don't know why, but in Malaysia, most of the people doing Tai Chi are old, old guys. I, I'm not sure why. Um, they all move very slowly and they like, you know, stuff like that, okay? Whatever you do, use Tai Chi. Don't use Kung Fu. Don't go, Wacha! On them, okay? Oh, don't worry. That's 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 not blood. Um, I didn't kung fu any of my clients earlier, so don't don't use a stick and don't kung fu him like that, either. Don't, okay? No kung fu. If you're gonna act like Bruce Lee in front of your customers or your prospects, you're gonna lose them. So Tai Chi. Now, wh why Tai Chi? Y For you to understand why I say use Tai Chi, you you first have to understand the principle of Tai Chi. What is Tai Chi? Tai Chi is pretty much using the energy of the person coming to you back against him. So you're deflecting energy back to your prospect or customer. So what can you do? If let's say your customer says to you, it's too expensive, you can have some fun with this, you know. You can pull the Tai Chi thing on him by going, it, it, it's too expensive? And then you wait for the answer. And then, or, or you could you go, it's, it's too expensive? But no one has ever said that to me before. And then you wait for his reply. Now the reason why you want to do that is because you want to dig. You want to put the ball back into your prospect's court so that they tell you why they think it is too expensive. Now once they tell you why, then you can handle that. Okay, so you can ask things like, um, other questions like, uh, what were your expectations about this product? Or what price range did you have in mind? Oh, uh, that's a dangerous one, by the way, because most prospects, they hate telling you what's their budget or what's the price range they had in mind because they're afraid you go all the way up to the top. All right, so dangerous one, but, but you can still ask it. Or you could ask them questions like, what are you going to use it for? And you know, uh, and once you get, let's say your customer wants to buy a phone, a phone. If you ask them what they're going to use it for, in a lot of cases, you can actually show them a cheaper product or a product with uh, a, a lower price range that still meets all their requirements, making them happy, making you happy. So. The first way to handle price objections is to Tai Chi it back, not Kung Fu it back. Okay, Tai Chi it back. By giving, by using questions, by asking them questions about, you know, what they're going to use the product for, or, you know, could go like, it's too expensive. Now, the second way you can handle price objections is to raise the value bar. Now, I'm just going to use this example. People buy products when the value they think of, they perceive of your product is higher than the price they're going to pay. So this red thing is the value, the silver thing is the price. If they think the value of a product is higher than what you're charging them, 
they think is a great deal, they'll buy. The problem is that when customers tell you that it's too expensive, your value bar, the rate bar, is lower than the price you're offering them. So they think they're getting a crappy deal. So one of the things you can do is to raise the value bar and raise it so much so that the customer goes, wow, this is a fantastic deal. So how do you do this? How do you, how do you raise the value bar? Now you could do something simple like throwing something inexpensive in, a free gift or something. Um, a lot of Malaysians, we, I mean, we love free gifts, okay? So if you throw in a free gift, they are a lot more likely to buy. Um, another way you can do, do this is by giving them more service. Okay? Throw in, throwing in more service is a very cheap way in actually increasing the value bar. Or you could show them what they are gaining. Show them. Um, I, are they just buying a phone? Or are, they just, or are they buying the ability to stay connected with their friends everywhere they go? So, giving them the benefit, adding the value. You can focus on benefits, not features. So, um, example, come back to the phone. If let's say the phone has a big screen, instead of telling them, this phone has a big screen, that's why it's so expensive. Okay? You could tell them, this phone costs so much so, because of its huge screen. And the screen is huge, so it'll be nice to lie in bed with and share the video with your girlfriend. Or, you know, you, instead of saying just the features, it has GPS, you could say things like, uh, it has GPS, and so what this means is, you'll never ever get lost again. You told me you're a salesman, right? Now, you'll never ever get lost on your way to your clients again making sure you're always on time. So if they think about being on time for their customers, if they think about sharing videos with their girlfriends or their loved ones, guess what? The value of your product goes way up. Okay, and another way to raise the value bar is to use testimonials. Because, look, salespeople used to have a very good what's that word, um, a very good reputation. You know, people used to trust and listen to salespeople, but you know, lots of abuse has happened and people trust salespeople less. And how you can go get over this is to use testimonials. To raise the bar for the value bar for your, for your uh, product, you can use testimonials. From customers who bought from you, you can use video testimonials, you can use written testimonials, Whatever, people are a lot more willing to listen to someone else besides you. Okay, so how to handle price objections? Number one, you Tai Chi, don't Kung Fu. The second way is to raise the value bar so that the price they pay for it is a lot less than the perceived value. Then they'll think it's a great deal. And number three, another way you can handle price objections is to lower the risk bar. Take the risk all the way from here to down here. Now, a lot people are willing to do things when they're not risky. People are willing to buy things when there's little risk. That's why supermarkets put sweets and um, candies and batteries up front near the uh, cash counter. Why? Because these are low risk products. These are products that, you know, you call it impulse purchases. So, to lower the risk bar, what you can do Number one, lower the price. And that's terrible, guys. That's what most salespeople only do. Okay? So try that only at the last, um, you have no way out option. So you can lower the price. To lower the risk bar even further, you can even give them easy payment schemes. So instead of paying, $5,000 now, you pay it over one year, you pay it over two years. Leasing, renting, that's what, that, I mean, that's what these schemes do. So, to lower the risk, give them easy payment schemes. Another way you can lower the risk bar is to make it re sound really cheap or cheaper by saying, 
you only pay RM, uh, two ringgit a day more if you buy this product. And this is to ensure you get clean water for your family every day. Is clean water for your family worth $2 a day? So instead of saying, is clean water worth $1,000 or if it's worth $2 a day? Big difference. Or if you give them a satisfaction guarantee. You now one thing I like, uh, some products I buy, I ask the salespeople whether I can return it. Because some things are high risk purchases. Uh, some things I buy back home, I don't know whether I can use. Like a video camera for example, like you know the one I'm recording this with. I really don't know if it'll work the way I want it to. So I ask the salesperson, can I return this? And if the salesperson say, no, I don't buy at all. Okay. So, but if the salesperson offers me a satisfaction guarantee, no question asked return, well, I'll buy. That's because the salesperson has lowered the risk bar till it's very, very low. So, to handle price objections or value objections, three things. Tai Chi, number one. Number two, raise the value bar. Or number three, you lower the risk bar. And guys, if they still don't buy from you, here's an advice. Don't be a dick. Girls, it includes you. If they don't buy, don't be a dick. Okay, because look, if people don't buy now, they'll buy later. It doesn't matter when. I have clients that haven't bought from me in years, but just started buying. Three, four years. Now they buy. So, don't be a dick. Be nice. Your job is to build relationships. And please refer them to someone who can actually help them with what they need. Because you know what? They would love you for it.